All right, traders, this is today's recap. It is Wednesday, the 24th, and uh, I'm kind of chuckling a little bit just watching uh, what else, watching uh, this GameStop continue <laughs> continue to squeeze, squeeze higher. Listen, what, you know, what's kind of interesting is, uh, you know, we don't even know what the short interest is anymore. I'm sure it's not that big, right? I mean, on Bloomberg, it says that the short interest in GameStop is, let's see, um, it's 32 percent of the float i mean you know that could squeeze a little bit but that's nothing in comparison to what it was so and again it's a little bit outdated the short interest but um it's certainly i, I and I, I would use a little bit of intuition here and say that nobody would be stupid enough to put on a big short position in this thing again it's just not worth the risk so I don't know. It's kind of interesting what's going on. I, I don't really understand that the driving force of this, you know, other than, of course, you know, people on message boards pumping this up and, you know, um, and we all know that that site and so forth. But it's kind of interesting because at the end of the day, the last hour of the day, uh, we did see this in multiple stocks, not just game, not just game stonk. But um, we also saw this in KOSS and we saw this in AMC, uh, a little bit in Bed Bath & Beyond as well. Um, but yeah, these, these names do not have that type of short interest anymore. So um, one thing that I was just saying in the trading room is, you know, you could play all these essentially through XRT as well, right? So XRT is, you know, we went over this, it's, it's a little bit like deja vu all over again, to quote Yogi Berra. Um, but if you, but this ETF has a lot of these names that do have a decent short interest, like um, like the ones that you see in front of you. And it's an easier way to kind of, I think, to kind of navigate this move. And especially like if you wanted to trade options, they're going to be a little bit more manageable um, to do that. But you could see this is uh, XRT is up to 86, right? And you could see the move that's happening here. So there'll be some resistance come at 90. And I think for for GME, you're going to have some resistance at two at 220, which we're rapidly getting close to. So, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I'll tell you, this is an interesting dynamic. And, you know, as I talked about weeks ago, I, I really don't understand this other than, you know, could it be more stimulus checks coming? And Powell spoke today and, um, you know, we're not really seeing any change to kind of get back to the overall market. Uh, you know, we're not really seeing any change in tone. So uh, is it just speculate, speculative fuel, right? Like Tinder, you know, in terms of more stimulus checks going. So um, it's kind of, it's, it's definitely an entertainment type story. Risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only. Again, my name is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group. And um, we'll start to kind of get into t into today's action. By the way, you know, I, I watched the Portnoy um, video last night with the CEO of Robinhood. And, you know, m my point of view is that, you know, I understand the animosity, right, against the CEO. But, uh, you know, I was trying to make a point and I was being it kind of in a saying it in a snarky way last night on Twitter. And I was just saying, like, you know, yes, this this CEO is not the best communicator. Right. He also, you know, this type of application that we've talked about for years, Robinhood, is, you know, to be something that is not as you know, well put together as some of it, as some of the other brokerages. So I understand people are very, very angry and passionate about what happened and how it was poorly, it was communicated. And I agree. I'm not, I have not been a fan of Robinhood for a while because I just don't think they're sophisticated enough uh, in this day and age. And, you know, other than, you know, putting, making bets like you would on DraftKings, it's kind of the same thing, right? That's how I view Robinhood as, DraftKings, right? Like betting a little bit of money on the side. Um, that's how I associate it, but other people associate it differently. But I would go back to, you know, in the United States and many other countries, you have choices, right? If you don't like what they did um, or how they handled it, the best thing that you could do as a consumer, well, there's probably two things, right? We'll talk two different avenues. The one avenue is take your business and go someplace else. Right. It happens to me with when I get mad at a cable company. Right. <laughs> and I don't like if the service you take your business and you give it to somebody else. Right. You could cry about it and say, you know, this company's bad and so forth. Cry and whine about it. But really, 
you have power with your business. Take your business and give it to somebody else, right? And hopefully they do right by you. Um, the other more severe action is you could file a lawsuit if you're really that upset about how something was handled. But um, what I was saying, and I finally said to, to a few people on Twitter, I'm like, guys, you have to move on, right? You can't continue to, to um, you know, whine about this and you're missing opportunities that are in front of you and maybe some of those people woke up and now they're now they're trading game game stock again i don't know but it's an important lesson to learn and you know that's why like i i do speak up on twitter every once in a while but I'm like guys you got to understand it's just it wasn't a good company to begin with and if and if you didn't realize that and if you didn't do your due diligence um you know i understand if you're new to trading and you're navigating and you didn't know any better it's understandable, right? But if you've been trading for a while, then really taking the time to kind of figure out if this was a good application to begin with may have something that you wanted may have been something that you wanted to check into. Okay, so let's move on. I, I just spent five six minutes talking about that, but you know, it, it, it's it is a it's a hot topic right now, and I and I wanted to cover it in some capacity. Let's move to the market. Um, big move, I would say. Uh, you know, a crazy thing that's that is kind of happening today is what I've been kind of you know starting off a lot of these videos, some of them, not every day, but with the move in bonds, right? So this kind of got to a, a little bit of a fever pitch, right? In terms of this move really accelerated to the downside. Now um, we had a virgin point of control taken out, right? So again, this is an area of big volume that virgin point of control is was an area of big volume that was not revisited prior so they act as magnets right we've been talking about them all week long and um so this coupled with how oversold bonds are on the rsi relative strength index they got down to basically an 18 right a lot of times we talk about the rsi when things have been getting overbought because that's the environment that we've been in right when some some names have gotten up to be like a you know an 85 90 rsi and usually they back off pretty quick from there right even if you want to go back to the our our our, our excuse me, XRT example, right? This got to, if you want to look at, at the RSI of where this thing got to back, you know, a few weeks ago, it got to a 91. That's usually a danger point when something gets that extreme. It could continue to go higher, you know, once it kind of hit 90, it went from 90 bucks to 99, but then look at what happened, right? It broke down pretty decently. So you're you're getting to that point with the bonds and, and you know, the bonds only ended up down, um, you know, well, this may be new numbers for the day. Uh, this is 30 basis points. But, um, you know, you could see now our hammer bar. And they're probably, I would think, if I had to guess, they will probably bounce a little bit from here, right? Now, the trend is still down, so you have to be careful. We talked about this in the, in the morning uh, about how oversold the, the bonds are. And, for example, TLT, which is a little bit different duration, um, you know, it still has a VPOC down here. And, th and this recovered quite nicely too. This was down like 1.8%. But again, you're talking about really, really, um, this is a 20 RSI now. Uh, and again, it was about an 18 earlier. So why is all this important? Well, you know, when the volatility picks up in the bonds, right? And there's this, there is this measure of volatility in, in the treasuries through this index that uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch or BOFA uh, publishes. It's a weighted average. And it's like the VIX, right? And remember, the VIX is for the S&P, but this is like the VIX for bonds, right? So it's, so it's interesting. Um, and if you look at the, you could actually look and there is um, a little bit of a correlation when volatility rises. And I don't know the exact numbers here. I apologize because I just haven't done the math. But um, but you could see that sometimes, right, th not all the time, but sometimes when this when this goes up, right, you know, and I don't and I don't think this is updated yet, by the way, for the day. Um, I think they update it like at the at the end of the day. Uh, but you could see that when there's volatility in treasuries there, it could also translate to volatility in equities. Now, I don't know if it's this if it's one causing the other or if there's just volatility at the same time in both areas. But um, you could see when that volatility picks up in 
treasuries, um, it does have that relationship. And I think specifically, you know, what we've been seeing with the queues. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, the queues started to really get hit again this morning, just to kind of bring you through where we were this morning. The queues were leading. And, you know, I was noting right before we did our pre-market session, our live pre-market session at Tribeca Trade Group that we do every day at, um, at nine o'clock in the morning, you know, the, the queues were up about like 50, 60 basis points, and they declined very quickly to down 1%. So they made a nice turn here, and all in all, we had a pretty another pretty good trading day. And if we look, if, if I go back to the performance here, um, you could see that the queues made the biggest jump, right, up 1.7%. Um, excuse me, IWM was better than that. IWM was, uh, you know, just continues to motor along, was up 2.4% for the day. Very, very strong. So that's kind of the story. Um, you know, I was long, uh, I've been long diamonds. Uh, I took that trade off today. Um, I made some nice money in, in diamond options. And if we kind of go through the biggest performers, of course, you know, what we just talked about with, um, I don't even know what you call these stocks because they're not that big short interest stocks anymore. But meme stocks, I guess, is what everybody's talking about. Um, you know, the, the, obviously this drove this group today at the end of the day up 5.3%, but you also had some really good performance. Look at the semis today. They made a four up 4% 4 move from the open. So very strong. Um, we went through and kind of, um, you know, we're looking at some of those names this morning and so on and so forth. And um, I'm long, a, I'm long one or two. Um, Solar stocks also made a recover to defense stocks, right? So that was something that we talked about this weekend. So we really kind of set this week up pretty well. And, I'll, and I want to talk about, too, I want to talk about, you know, the last couple of weeks, how they kind of materialized. But if you remember back on Friday's video, I talked about how the industrials, right, that we might see a decent rotation take place. I talked about this all day on Friday in the trading room as well as the video uh, after hours. But we talked about how XLI was getting out of this multi-month range, right, and today broke out to new highs. Very, I mean, you don't normally see groups like this rally, you know, two percent. Um, the aerospace and defense, which we also talked about last week, very strong. And then, of course, if you want to look at the materials, they had a fine day too. A lot of the, um, a lot of the chemical companies. Uh, I went long Dow today, right? Break, you know, broke out very nicely in, in Dow today. Um, going back to the industrials, Boeing finally really got going. Now it got helped a little bit by um, Kramer mentioned it too, but you know I've been sitting in this Boeing for a few days. Um, I think actually Friday is when I switched out of an option position and said, "Screw it, I'm just going to stick in some stock." Too it was too difficult for me to stay in an option position. So um, this thing looks like it could be marching up to this VPOC up here at 232, which is my ultimate target for now in the stock. But um, the other name that we saw, and and I, I was going over this in the Q and A session. We had about an hour Q and A session, but you know I lined up that ITA right. I was talking about the 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 strength and what looked like was materializing at the end of last week in the aerospace and defense stocks. So I was specifically looking to add exposure in this group. You know, what did we see earlier in the week? Right? A big call by Iron Raytheon, right? When I do the research and, I'm, and I notice that a group is coming to the front of relative strength and I happen to see a call buyer in that group, um, it, I will very much, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll often take that trade. Um, why? Because I've done the research already. So when I see it on the tape and when I see big institutional money start to go after a couple names that I know because I've done the research that look pretty good, boom, there's, there's, there's no hesitation, right? I, I'm, I'm in there and um, this was a nice trade for me today, you know, up 5%. So doing that homework over the weekend, Right. And, you know, in the after hours market and so forth, I can't stress enough how much it separates you from other people who may just be reading the tape. Right. And reacting to some of those moves rather than doing the research, figuring out that those are the ones that are about to turn and that you're seeing something different take place there. So that puts us, you know, Tribeca Trade Group so much ahead of the pack. Um, you know, if you look if in terms of when we started to talk about this last week, there wasn't very many people talking about 
you know, that there was going to be, that looked like there was going to be a rotation to some of these areas. So yes, I'm giving myself a little bit of a pat on the back, but I work really hard at this, right? I spend a lot of time on the weekend. I spend a lot of time in the after hours picking up on which groups look like they're starting to um, break out, break out of consolidation, or just basically show relative strength. So that works really well for us, right? Um, you know, and of course, you know, the Jets, you know, we, we knew as well last week that the transports, right, that was the other group that we were talking about, you know, that looked like some strength. So you look through some of these charts that I'm going over, and they look very different than what happened and what materialized in growth names. So, um, and the other thing, uh, you know, that I've stressed as a retail investor, right, you can hop into any one of these groups. I know that there's a big presence, like on financial Twitter and other places where people are really honed into growth stocks. I love growth stocks too. I'm all about growth stocks, but if they're not going to trend and if there's other areas of the market like transports, industrials, uh, defense names, materials, chemicals, financials, if those are the ones that are going to trend, then you got to make some adjustments and, and get involved in some of those names. And, you know, that's basically what we did this week, right? Also our, watch list trade for this week while it hasn't done great because i have a mix you know i'm happy to uh, to show this and you know hopefully it's got a little bit more legs but um it, it's green on the day and there's a couple dingers in here you know we got this one wrong it looks like home you know discretionary but if you, if you look at how i really uh, situated this you know i put a material i put cf industries in here i put alley which really hasn't broken out yet which is a little bit disappointing but we've got other names in here like DuPont, right? We've got ERJ, which is up 15%. We've got GE, which is up 9%. Um, I had the aerospace, speaking of that, I had that as well as the Jets ETF in here, right? Um, MHK has actually done pretty good in here too. Uh, yeah, that from, from and again, this is struck on, the, on Monday's open, by the way. Right. So if you're wondering why we're underperforming a little bit is because in this I, I hold SPY over the weekend, which was down three quarters of a percent. So that's that's why this is um, down versus the S&P a bit. Right. Um, TTD actually down 11 percent, too. So I did mix in a couple growth names in here. Unfortunately, those growth names are um, are getting, you know, taken out pretty decently. So we talked about that one group that I haven't that I've left out is the um, steel names, right? U.S. Steel got going today. You know, I, I was somewhat aggressive here on the open today. If we go through my trades, you know, I did take um, AAL and I didn't stay in it all day long. I was happy. Whenever I get into an airline, it's just me, but I decide to kind of take my profits rather, rather quickly. Right. So I view it as a gift. If I can get into an airline and take and get profits in it um, within a couple hours, I usually just take them and move on. You know, 185 pay, you know, not a double or anything like that. But um, here is my trade in U.S. And um, so I even, you know, I think it's it's getting a little bit late to be looking at the materials. Right. Like I said, we 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 came upon this last week. So I think some of it is getting a little bit long in the tooth, right? If you see names starting to look parabolic, right? That means that you're probably going to see some profit taking in some of these names, right? And now you could start looking for things like the semiconductors and some growth names, right? It's constantly a push pull mechanism, right? When we see these rotations into value, value stocks go up, growth names go down. But what happens eventually is the growth names become more attractive because they've gone down some. And then money goes back into the growth names. I don't know exactly what stage we are, but you know, one of the things I said this morning was, hey, I'm actually going to be looking at some growth stocks after a multi-day move in value stocks. Um, it doesn't mean I want to jump all the way, because um, you could see I added things like US, you know, I decided to add US Steel and, and Dow today. Um, Cree was a nice name. That's one of the semis. Um, I also talked a lot about, you know, Micron today and Micron had a huge day uh, up 4.8%. Nice uh, price target raise, I think, by Deutsche Bank this morning. Um, Taiwan Semi um, also made a nice move back, which I view as kind of best in breed. Um, let's see where NVIDIA is trading after hours. I thought, you know, it makes it very tricky with some of these names that are reporting. Um, you know, this name again, like I didn't, I didn't play it in options today because I just think it's too tricky. Like I, you know, I did, I read through, you know, everything that they said in terms of earnings. It looked like a pretty clean report, you know, like beating everywhere and the stock's not up that much. So 
it's very, I, I've been finding it this last earning cycle, it's been very, very difficult, right? TDOC had great numbers too. They're down, they're down to almost 20 points or, or 14 points, down 14 points. And they beat every metric. So <laughs> what? So the, the moral here is if it doesn't make sense to you, don't trade it, right? Um, don't trade the names for earnings and maybe you can pick on some of these things um, when they sell off on strong or on strong numbers, right? That's my opinion on how to handle this, you know, what we've been seeing in earnings results so far. Uh, the expectations are probably a little bit too high for some of the names. All right, so that's a lot of things that we covered. We covered the move in bonds. Um, I covered, you know, what I traded today and, and some of the big moves. Um, this MP, we saw some calls in this one, and I think the CEO is on Kramer tonight. This thing's trading up to 45 here after hours. So, you know, nice to have a little piece of a, of a rare earth, right? So again, I'm, I've got pieces of where I think there's relative strength. And then, you know, for some of the growth names, um, being patient. You know, if something looks like, you know, it's jumping off the page to you in terms of uh, a signal, then, you know, I think it's okay to, to um, you know, to take it, right, if you see a really good signal. But I would not force getting back into the growth names, you know, unless the setup looks really, really good to you. So I, I would be picky and I would be patient um, until they until some of those setups materialize. And I do think that they, that they will. Um, it's just a matter of time. Okay, so that's a couple things. Um, also, this was a great mention by one of the traders in the room was Honeywell, right? All the aerospace and defense names going up. Um, Honeywell had a huge day today, up 3%. This name just doesn't move that much. You could see the previous candles in here, but this, this name finally uh, popped pretty nicely too. All right, so um, yeah, I mean, you know, so I do take, I do get into some things, right? Z Zillow worked for me yesterday. I rolled the Zillow, but you could see it was down 2.7% today. So not ready. It's not ready yet. So even though I view it as a good opportunity, um, it, it just may not be ready yet. And one thing that was particularly interesting today was, um, right, so here's my targets in Boeing, a um, couple targets here in U.S. Steel. Oh yeah, McDonald's. Here I'll give I'll give you one for that I'm looking at for tomorrow, and I kind of put on a preemptive position, but it's kind of it's a little val value value esque, but really coiled. It may not be ready yet, so I just kind of put on a a preemptive position. I would watch for a break of two fifteen in McDonald's, but it, it looks like I mean it looks pretty close to, to breaking out. We need some volume and we need some buying. But I think if this pushes, you know, we could see a move up to like 222, right? And, it, you know, nothing wrong with going long, long McDonald's, in my opinion. Okay, so that's, um, that's that. I was going to mention that one area that did not participate was the ARC funds. Um, you know, look at the performance of these things today. Arc Innovation was still down on the day. So big. So again, it just kind of tells you that right now um, we're not seeing that buy that huge buy the dip in the growth areas, right? Arc Innovation is big is big areas of growth. So so my opinion, and of course this video is for information pur purposes only, uh, education purposes only. That um, like I I'm not buying this until I see buyers kind of come back into let's say the Arc funds, right? The Arc F FinTech was down 1.6 percent on the day, right? And again, what's interesting too is the moves that are taking place in more of your old school payment companies. Not to say Visa and MasterCard are old school, but they're a little bit more old school than, than a Square and a PayPal. But hey, this pattern has been going sideways for a while. So this thing wants to continue to go higher. I think 384 is in the cards. You know, if it, kinda, if it can get out of this little range, um, I like MasterCard here. All right, guys, so a lot of opportunities. You know, I would make sure, of course, that you stick to your trading plan and stay disciplined. Um, but, you know, there's some exciting things going on. And and the last thing, you know, this video is already 24 minutes long, but we're almost at the end already of um, of February. Sorry, lost my train of thought. We're, we're almost at the, at the end of February, believe it or not. I know it's the 24th, but because February only has 28 days, we only have two more trading days. Um, I would review how you did beginning of month versus end of month. Um, I, I will tell you this because I think it's important and I stress these things in, in these videos is that 
a lot of traders, younger traders, and again, I was there once too, and I've one of the things that I've really worked on in my trading career is when the market is trending to try to suck as much profits that you can out of the system. And then when it stops to trend and starts to chop, to try to really make some adjustments to not give it back, right? And then, you know, waiting for the green light and then you can press the accelerator down. But I'll tell you, you know, if, you know, we were, we were talking about performance today in, in the Q&A session and, you know, you, I would monitor how you did in the first part of the month versus the end. And I think it's a win, number one, if you perf if you outperform the indices, which I think the S&P is up around 5% for the month. Um, Qs are up a little bit less than that. And uh, IWM, I'm just going from, the, from my memory here, IWM is up about 10% for the month. So if you outperformed those, you did a good job. Um, and if you really outperformed, right, then you really made some good adjustments mid-month and, and, you know, over the last week to not give back your, your profits. If you're mainly playing on the long side, which is what I'm doing, right? So that's kind of, the, you know, the feel. And, and if you gave back too much of what you made in the beginning of the month, then that's really where you want to kind of analyze what you did. And, you know, I was talking about this again in, in, in the trading room today that I had a rough go of it the last week of January, right? And I knew after that, I was like, I need to make some adjustments, right? I need to, I need to tighten down my process because I gave back too much in January, right? So if that's happened to you, don't, you know, I wouldn't fret about it. Um, I would just kind of go over what you did and, and, you know, was it you held too many positions, too big size positions, um, too many short-term option positions, right? Usually those are the culprits of when the market starts to turn and go, you know, head south. Um, you want to make sure that, that, you're, that you are making some of those adjustments that you need to do. This way you can improve for next time. So I would not get discouraged if you got beaten up over the last week for any reason. Um, and just learn from it. Um, and again, it happened to me end of January. I made some adjust adjustments and I'm much better for it. All right, guys, have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow.